your force on the ice has everything to do with whether or not you're going through the ice. So we're going to basically push ice to its breaking point so you don't have to. It's our wow behind the weather. It's a risky dilemma. As you stand poised on the edge of that frozen pond, do you step out on it or not? How do you know if this is safe? To examine the strength of varying ice thicknesses, we had Brainstorm's official experiment technician, Josh Garcia, set up a test we like to call walking on thin ice. First up, our pool. It's covered with an ice slab just one inch thick. A one inch slab has a tensile strength similar to cardboard. And that's why the ice begins to break even before Josh is able to put all of his weight on it. While one inch is clearly unsafe to step on, this may surprise you. Just doubling the thickness can increase its weight holding capabilities by up to four times. <laughs> Here we go. A two inch slab initially supports Josh's 210 pound body weight. But with just one small jump, G-forces cause the load to double. That's more than 400 pounds of force on the ice. And that's why most groups suggest avoiding just two inches thick of ice. Josh is right. Safety organizations warn against venturing out on ice that's just two inches thick or less. One major reason why the ice fails is the concentration of your body weight. Let's take Josh in his boots each of which has a contact area of about 50 square inches. Here, the three inch slab firmly holds him. That's actually not so bad. But when Josh puts on ice skates, his weight is concentrated on an area about 25 times smaller. And the greater concentration of force breaks the ice. My boots were safe on three inches, but it was no match for these ice skates. Finally, we'll test ice that's four inches thick. This ice has a similar strength of a slab of concrete at exactly the same thickness. In fact, solid ice that's four inches thick can support more than half a ton of weight, proving it's more than safe for Josh to have fun and this time stay dry. 